Hello, it's Sarah from Heart Over Heart Set. I'm here with uh, very belated. It's, I know we're only three days in, but it feels like I should have done this earlier, but I needed a little time to think about it. This is my Aussie April pile of possibilities. Uh, Aussie April, if you don't know about it, is an event that is hosted by Jacqueline from Six Minutes from Me and Doris of Alda Books. And they basically are promoting the reading of Australian literature uh, in the month of April. So it's really exciting. They've done it for a few years for now. And I, I just think it's a great way to make sure that Australian literature is on people's radar. I admit for myself, it's it's very hard. I don't always know of what's coming from Australia. So a resource like Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me, her channel is phenomenal, both in Instagram as well as BookTube for promoting and keeping people abreast of what's available. Uh, some of some of the books can be a little challenging to find. Australian literature is notorious for being uh, expensive if you buy it, but you could check your libraries. And I have found actually Scribd, the online book, uh, book service to be really good at being able to read Australian literature. Uh, not all, not, I can't always find what I'm looking for, but frequently I have been able to find. And I keep checking every once in a while and sometimes it'll refresh and, and put new things up. So that's an option for you. Uh, but let's get into what my pile of possibilities look like. Now, I say pile of possibilities. First, I need to give thanks where it's due. This is for Kazen of Always Doing. She's the one who really coined the phrase pile of possibilities. And I love it because I'm not good at a to be read pile. I mean, this is all to be read piles, right? Um, but for me, I... Unless I'm doing a buddy read where I have a commitment with someone to read something in the month or reading for like the booktube prize or, or something like that, uh, a literary event, I want to have flexibility and freedom in what I choose to read. And uh, I so if I tighten myself up too much and say on these days I'm reading these books, I, I rebel against my own notions. It's ridiculous, but that's how I am. So pile of possibilities gives me the freedom saying, hey, this is the grouping that I'd like to choose from. So you'll have to check in with me through the month of April to see which ones I've actually made it to. Uh, some of these I know I'm going to get to. Uh, and let's start with the first one. So I've grouped these actually in um, literary fiction. Then we have mystery thriller, which, you know, is one of my favorite genres. And then uh, nonfiction. So in the literary fiction area, the first one is The Enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree. This is by Shukafe Azar. Now, uh, this woman, this writer is originally from Iran, but uh, fled and moved as a refugee to Australia in 2011. Uh, but this won the Stella Prize. So I am not stretching my uh, definition uh, here, if they won the, if she won the Stella Prize, this fits. The Stella Prize is Australian's literature, literary prize for women writers. And this is a story of a family that leaves Tehran, uh, in 1979, uh, during the political uprise and moves to a small village and how they, and, and how they adapt to village life told through the eyes of a 13 year old ghost. Yes, Behar. Uh, I'm not always a fan of ghost uh, narrators, <laughs> but we'll see. I'm going to give this one some, ch you know, magical realism can be really beautiful and a really interesting way to tell a story. So I'm looking forward to this. And I'm reading this with Natalie of A Curious Reader, who has a phenomenal channel if you've not followed her. Uh, she's one of the co-hosts for uh, the uh, Invisible Cities Project uh, this year. So just doing some great, great reading there. So excited by this, and I'm currently in progress with that. And then, uh, and so Jacqueline used to live in the United States, and she just recently had to move back to Australia. And through her her act of having to go through all of her books. Uh, she farmed out a few to a few of us, and I was lucky enough to get this in another book. And I say lucky enough because this actually is on the Stella shortlist, and it's right up my alley. She chose very well. Thank you, Jacqueline. This is Stone Sky Gold Mountain by Mirandi Rewo. 
And this is also kind of a refugee story of a family from China who had to flee and have uh, moved to Australia. Uh, so I'm really excited about this. This is in a different time setting. This is in the early 19th century right here. So that'll be interesting to see the parallels of those two of those two stories. Uh, another book that I've wanted to read from an author I've only read one book from. Uh, so this is from Shirley Hazard, who was born in Australia, but moved to New York City. Well, she has a book that I that keeps popping up on my radar. You know how um, one book will recommend another, or pe as people talk about a book, they reference another. This it keeps coming up in those cross references, and it is Shirley Hazard's *Transit of Venus*. And this is about uh, some girls who moved to London and uh, and get involved uh, in in London. So excited to to read that one because I've heard remarkable things. It's supposed to be one of her best works. And then uh you know this one I think I might skip just because you know we've just had enough of a pandemic. However, I am fascinated with the time frame. Uh, this is uh, Geraldine Brooks's Year of Wonders. I've never re read any Geraldine Brooks. And this is set in spring 1666, time of the Great Plague. And if you follow my channel, you know that I'm kind of obsessed with Samuel Pepys, the great diarist of of that time. And so really curious to, to see this. It doesn't look that big. So if I have an opportunity, I might try to dig in to this one as well. But she's also an Australian writer, so that would suffice. Okay, so those are my lit fic picks. <laughs> now let's go to my uh, mystery thrillers. Just got this one. And this is Jane Harper's The Survivors. So I... So I really came to Jane Harper because of Ozzy April, and I love a good mystery. What she does well and what she's done amazingly in The Dry, in The Lost Man, is she provides a an atmospheric read. And I just love those. I love when you feel like you're in a new place. You feel like you're there. So I'm expecting that as well. Now, one of the knocks that I hear about Jane Harper is that she does incredibly uh, narrow uh, books uh, with with very few uh, other ethnicities other than white Australians. So, uh, you know, I am looking to see if she can expand a little bit. Australia is a very diverse place. It is, and so the idea that you're only only encountering these characters are only encountering people who are like them is a very insular worldview. And I would like a more expanded one as a reader um, as I pick up books. Uh, now I agree, you're supposed to read what you, you write what you know. Uh, but that does speak to, does she not know, uh, does she not engage in the world outside a very limited scope? Uh, so that's all curious to me. Uh, we'll see how this one goes, but that's a lens that I'm kind of walking into it with. Then I've just started falling in love with my next favorite mystery series. I've been doing a kind of purging of my net galley backlist. And in that, I ended up reading two Franny Fisher mystery series books by Carrie Greenwood. And I'm here to tell you, I am absolutely a convert to, to this world. It's set in the 1920s in Melbourne, and it's just incredibly vibrant. We have Franny Fisher, who is a very wealthy woman. Uh, she's I think she's a lady. She she's she's has some kind of title, very wealthy, but she had a hard scrap life growing up. And she saw she's a private investigator and she solves crimes. But she's also just an independent, sexually active, a uh, very curious, uh, a very uh, like intellectually curious person with a big heart. And I just love her character. It's also really lush with details like costumes and rooms and environments. And so you just feel like you're completely immersed in this world. And it's, I, I, I find the writing great. 
the subject matter fantastic. Uh, she always goes into these really interesting backstories and she, you could tell she does her research. So I have read number four and number nine. I, I liked both of them. I'm going to go back and read Cocaine Blues, which is the first one. Uh, so really excited to kind of start start as one should with a new series at number one. So I hope to get to that this month. So the next one I'm incredibly excited about because this appeared on this year's Stella Prize as part of the long list. This was recommended to me by Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure. I'll put a link to all of these people's channels below because uh, they're all phenomenal. This is The Wandering by Itan Paramaditha. And it is supposed to be phenomenal. It's like a choose your own adventure story, but really well written. It, everyone that has read it says it's super fun. Uh, so I'd like to dip my toes in and see what it's like. Uh, I bought it on Mel's recommendation just because she said it was such a blast. Uh, so I'm incredibly, incredibly excited. Uh, this is one that I'm going to try to prioritize to get, to get it to, because you don't read all of it. You kind of choose your own adventure, follow a path. Uh, if you make this choice, you go here. If you make that choice, you go there kind of thing. Uh, sounds, sounds very creative and very interesting. So, uh, especially knowing that it was done very well. So that's that one. And then for my pick for nonfiction, uh, this is the other book that uh, Jacqueline sent me. Oh, I'm so excited about it. This is Blueberries by Elena Savage. Uh, it says, what kind of, of body makes a memoir? And this is kind of a collection of essays. Uh, it, it's, they're saying that this kind of breaks genre and ba breaks form because there's a lot of things in here, which makes, I, you know, I love stuff like that. I love intellectually uh, interesting material. And this was long listed for the Stella Prize, but did not make the short list, unfortunately. Uh, but really excited to, to try this one as well. I'm going to prioritize getting that one done as, also. And then I also, this is something that I had on my list from last year that I didn't get to. This is Axiomatic by Maria Tamarkin. Uh, and she is an Australian writer. Uh, she actually came to East Bay booksellers here in, in Oakland. And I got to see her speak and she actually signed my book for me, which was quite lovely. Uh, yeah, she came in September of uh, 2015. I haven't had a chance to read this yet. Uh, but this is supposed to be incredibly powerful about trauma. So, uh, you know, this one might not get rid this year. I may need a little distance from this last year that we've had uh, before picking this up. But it is an Australian book and it's in my pile. Okay, so then let's talk about recommendations. I have two recommendations I want to make. Uh, and they're in very different sides of, of kind of the emotional spectrum. The first one is just sweet, just lovely uh, beautiful, packed with little details and richness. The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. Uh, beautiful, beautiful cover here. I ordered this from Black Wales, I think, in the UK because I could not find it here. This is the story of Alice Hart, uh, who has suffered a lot of trauma in her very, very early years, uh, loved, was very, very close with her mother, but had an incredibly abusive and controlling father. Um, something happens and she is, uh, ne needs to be shipped off to her grandmother. Uh, they lived on the coast with her mother and father. So when she's shipped off to her grandmother, she's more inland in a flower farm uh, that her grandmother runs with a, a slew of really interesting women. And her grandmother takes care and is kind of like a home, like a home den mother to a lot of these women. And so this is a, a lot about healing, about about language and communication and how we how we care for each other, uh, about cycles. Uh, cycles in nature, human nature, as well as nature itself. Uh, this went in so many different directions, but I felt like it was so magnificent and it gave so much about all these different spots in, in uh, Australia where this, the setting takes place. Uh, I, I, I just loved it. It was such a surprise. Uh, and, and I, it was absolutely delightful. 
then something on the complete other spectrum, <laughs> not quaint and, and cozy and delightful, but actually traumatic and scary and uh, jarring, um, intellectually challenging, uh, provoking is Bass Rock by E.V. Wilde. I read this recently and was absolutely blown away by it. The book is set in this one location with three different time horizons. And so we go really way back in time with this woman, young girl who was been, has been accused of being a witch and what happens and how the community responds to her. Then we have a woman kind of in the 1950s and she is the second wife to an older, older man and he has two young sons and they move to Bass Rock and she is... Uh, as a a a young uh, housewife trying to kind of fit in and kind of learn this new area, all of a sudden she deals with some jarring history in the in the space, um, which has harkens back to uh, maybe ripples of the earlier story, and then we also have a modern day story of a woman who is kind of challenged in a challenging place in her life uh, and her family. And she is trying to go through the, the, the house because her family member has died and she's kind of clearing it out. And it's just, there's so much there, but there's a lot of about misogyny and about violence against women. It's jarring. It's like I said, and it's scary. Uh, it takes you right up to to a lot of, of scary points and a couple of steps beyond. So trigger warnings for it, but it is a remarkable book. Remarkable. It's also on the Stella Price shortlist currently. So I really recommend reading it. And I think it's widely available, uh, which is also a good thing. So that's my list. That's my pile of possibilities for Aussie April. Please let me know, have you read any of these? And if so, do you, you know, how would you prioritize my, my reading? Would you, should I get to something a little earlier? I would also love to know, do you have any recommendations for me of Australian books or Australian authors that you think that I would particularly enjoy? So that's it for me for now. Thank you so much for watching and I uh, will look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.